right guys welcome to Katran TV and you are joining us on well a very very windy orchid lake um, the good news is we're on fish there's me here Gary Chapman's here Rod Bird's here and Andy Edlin's there's a few of us to try and winkle one of these fish out I mean as you know well, it's not easy because the wind is absolutely belting into us we, I don't really know I fished this lake once before so I don't really know the lake too well but I do know that we're on fish and we're all on fish actually so we've all seen fish um, and quietly confident that over the next 48 hours something's going to happen um, we'll talk about tactics we'll talk about we've got some new products to look at 25 pound Krypton um, first time I've actually buzzed the stuff out so um, be interesting to see how it performs compared to the other braking strains and uh, yeah we'll check rigs all that kind of thing baiting approach and fingers crossed something um, graces our net but we will keep you posted right good morning um, not a lot to report from last night <clears throat> One thing that we noticed yesterday was around about, I'd say midday, we saw a lot of shows out in front of us. Um, we were quite late getting set up and that led to a few problems. That, well, is it a problem having carp in front of you? It's not really, but it is when you don't know the swim. So I didn't want to chuck a lead at them um, because we've got it on good advice that they don't like it in here. And I didn't really know what I was dropping onto either so um, we did buzz the boat out that was a nightmare because we've got I mean we've had constant 35 40 mile an hour winds it's actually blowing a gale now hence we're in the bivy but we did notice a lot of shows and to me they looked like ziggy shows also a lot of the birds were swooping down and feeding off the top so for me they were they were definitely definitely on a hatch there's no two ways about it we're right at the start of february here but don't just because it's not hot and um the times where you normally associate hatching you know hatches and fish feeding on hatches doesn't matter there will that will still be going on out in the lake and actually this time of year it can happen quite a bit so all three rods are going on zigs um i'm going to go balls deep and try and winkle one out on the zigs and I've okayed it, I didn't know actually, not knowing the fishery, there's not a lot of information about what bait you can and can't use. So I've double checked it, we're all good to go. Um, and the bailiff tells me it's a pretty good show. Now, we've got around about seven foot out there. there there's a bar, you know, there's, I would say, look, if we go anywhere, if we go from four foot zigs, between three and five foot zigs is what I'm gonna sort of go, go with. Um, doesn't sound like a lot but that can make a difference you know if it's right in front of their face so just exploring the depths a little bit across three rods um, in the zone where we've seen fish which fortunately isn't a big chuck out because say a big chuck I would say it's around about 70 yards um, which is uh, doable with zigs that sort of size in a bloody great headwind <laughs> um, so what's going out there is they're on a hatch so I'm going to use um, a Medusa zig so maggots will be going onto these uh, onto these I'm not going to muck about guys because as I say there are bars out there there is still a lot of weed present so it's straight out with 16 pound zig line uh, from Katran and I can tell you now I've dragged fish in with trailers um, at, at a certain venue and it has not let me down, you know, so just, you know, sort of 30 pound fish, just under 30 pound fish, training lines and all sorts of things going on, and it has not let me down. And alongside that, again, not mucking about, um, you could go bigger, but I'm gonna go a size six. I'm gonna use a size six J Precision curve shank. Uh, it's like a short curve, so within the rules. And if we get a bite, there's every chance of landing it. I just think that if I go down the road of trying to be all, um, you know, scaling it all down and all the rest of it, if I get a bite, will I land it? And I don't want to be leaving fish trailing, um, trailing anything. So that's the plan. Um, I have got a few bits ready. So I'm going to, on the lowest zig, 
where I imagine they're going to be over the top of it if they take it. I'm going to use something a bit more visual. So that's a black aligner with a red zig. And on the two above it, it's going to be the reverse, which has done me really, really well, to be honest with you. So um, a red aligner with a black zig. And on top of all of those, um, I'm going to put some maggots. Yes, it will mask the colour a little bit, but obviously the maggots will be moving. They'll get flashes of colour. I just think it's just think it's our best shout. So a few do's and don'ts, I think, is, is probably worth mentioning with this. Um, the first thing is with relatively thin mono, I would never, ever, ever use a knotless knot. I would always, always, always opt for a Palomar. So Palomar is probably one of the easiest knots to tie, but for some reason very much underused. It's actually a great knot for Krypton mainline as well. And all you're doing is threading, threading your hook on to uh, a doubled up piece of line. So you've gone through the, the eye of the hook and then back through. So it's sat on a loop and I'm pinching the tag end here. Um, and then all we're doing is it's just simply creating an overhand knot. So there's the original loop, dropping the hook back through. Uh, if I can get myself stuck with these razor sharp hooks. Just wetting it, pulling it down. Um, and there we go. So obviously that isn't going to sit, that could sit funny, but because we're going to be using, with zig fishing, you're either really going to be using an aligner or you'll be using shrink tube or something. So that will make sure the line exits properly. But that knot with mono is ridiculously stronger than a knot this knot. Uh, take my word for it. I learned that the hard way. Practicing for the BCACs on beach, B1 years ago. Uh, now <coughs> we're going to go, we've got about seven foot of water out there in the zone that I want to fish, so I'm going to go three, four, and five foot. Uh, for the purpose of this, I will do the three foot zig. Uh, just going to have to bear with me because I, I will lose count. This box only goes up to eight inches, so I need to, need to measure 12, so that's eight. So that's one foot, two foot, three foot. Now, another really, really, really good tip when you tie your loop, um, make sure that you don't use a small figure of eight loop. There's, a, there's two reasons for this. One is the closer the knot is to the end of the loop, the weaker the knot, because it's putting a lot of pressure on the knot. And also I want the, the figure of eight loop to create a boom. So that's gonna really help me with uh, tangles. So just a standard figure of eight, but a big old figure of eight. So what's that for argument's sake? That's about as big as I'd go, but that is around about four inches. The loop's around about four inches. So you can imagine under tension, there's a lot less tension on the knot because it's away from the end of the rig, if that makes sense. Again, something I learned the hard way. Um, so, just in case that it's trimming the tag end off, making sure <laughs> that you don't cut your zig off, because that's very possible. Um, there we go. And then obviously with your aligners, this is the three footer. So we will use the red zig and as I said that is very much for well I'm kind of hoping look it's all theory you never know whether it's right or wrong uh, such as fishing but the idea being that 
it's if they're above the rig it's going to be more visual as they look down on it if that makes sense whereas with a black colored zig uh especially with the sky that we've got it's a very white sort of bleached out sky that we've got at the moment you know you would 100 percent need polaroids to see anything in the edge um they'll be on the black zigs so it silhouettes against that black sky uh, white sky sorry so on she goes and as i said size six hook i know that the trend is to use size 12s you know little small hooks and i've caught a lot of fish using small hooks in zigs but i've also caught a lot of fish using big hooks in zigs and actually what you would call on difficult what you, what you would associate a difficult lake to be um, this particular rig took that lake apart on a size six hook so what i've got to do then is pop my maggots on you can see that sits really really aggressively as well with the curve um, that's always sort of poised it's always cocked over if that makes sense because the weight of the because the zigs at the back the buoyancy is at the back so it kind of keeps that at uh, a very aggressive angle which i personally like and the last thing again something that not a lot of people do is uh, they'll always use an anti-tangle sleeve but a length of a little beep there could have changed everything and we end up sticking on the bottom <laughs> a length of 1.5 millimeter shrink tube goes absolutely lovely over a standard size 8 quick chain swivel which a lot of you guys will be using for your zig fishing so if you can imagine uh, once that's on and of course the other thing you can do once that's on the quick chain swivel you can you can actually make sure that the lines pull to the bottom of the quick chain swivel and then you can actually burn that down if you wanted to away from the mono um, but being very very careful but to grab that quick chain swivel so it's like you would a ronnie rig exactly the same as you would do with a ronnie rig um, and then what you've got is a very very you can see i hope you can see that the booms come in sticking out of that shrink tube so that that really really will minimize your tangles and when you punch into a headwind that's the time when you're going to get them so you've got to do everything that you can but headwind or not that's exactly how i'd fish the zig so i'm going to crack on now because i'm up against it i want to get all three done all three out before bite time and the, and the clock's ticking so uh yeah catch you in a bit let you know how we get on Hiya, I'm Rod and I'm here with Luke and Chappers and we're at Orchid Lakes, way down south of me. I've come all the way down from Middlesbrough. Um, so it's been, uh, it's been a bit of a drive, but worth it. There's some lumps in here and that's what we're after. Unfortunately, we've got a really, really, really cold wind, 30, 40 mile an hour constantly, but you've got to be in it to win it. So the approach that I've gone for is I've gone for known spots. I've done quite a lot of research on the lake through friends uh, and on social media. Never fished the place before, but that's the norm for me. I fished 20 different waters last year and I'm starting this year with a brand new water. So how have I approached Orchid, the famous Orchid? Well, as I say, spots that I know of, I've put my rigs out, what rigs am I going to use? What's the safest rig to use? I believe it's the Ronnie rig. So I've got three Ronnie rigs out. Got a normal Ronnie rig here with a size 12 Carper fluoro pop-up. And it's a spicy knot, but I've soaked it in a new liquid lure that we've got out, which will be out very shortly. So I've got two of them on that, and it's on the Phantom fluorocarbon. 
The phantom fluorocarbon is Japanese and it's 100% fluorocarbon. It's not a coated line, it is 100% fluorocarbon. So it sinks like a brick. The knot strength is phenomenal and it virtually disappears on the lake bed. So that's the normal Ronnie and I've also got one as a Medusa, which I've put a slightly larger pop-up on it and I've obviously tied maggots to the top once again on the phantom so i've got them out and i've got them about 10 yards 10 yards and 10 yards i haven't put three in the spot um, it's very weak weedy out there at the moment i've had to go 60 yards just to get past the weed and then these gullies that go in and out and up and down so i'm sitting just in between two piles of weed and i'm sat right in the middle with the three rods there's obviously something that goes all the way around the lake or through the lake so that's what i've put them how am i getting out there in this wind i'm using my v60 sorry my v80 bait boat um, which is an absolute lump um, from future carping and uh, it's cutting through the waves no problem at all bit dodgy dropping it so i'm gonna have to drive when it hits the spot i'm just releasing the hoppers as i'm moving forward and what I'm doing is I'm just pinching the line slightly and that brings the rig back to me a little bit so I'm not sat right in the centre of the bait, I'm sat right at the end. Apparently on here, after research, the fish don't like to sit on the bait, they'll graze around the outside. So that's the idea. So that's my approach at the moment. Fingers crossed, I don't think the wind's going to stop. I think we've got another 24 hours left and I think it's to pick up. So we'll just keep doing what we're doing it's just gone past bite time nine till 12 it's half 12 now so in the next hour we're going to reset rigs are ready to go on the catron phantom 100 percent it's just good stuff um, disappears strong as you like fingers crossed guys Yes, yeah, so I'm about to send out my rigs for tonight using the boat, but I'll just quickly go through. Because of the leader ban on Orchid, I've decided to fish just naked straight through. Krypton carp line will take that all day, all day long. All I've got, lead clip, rubber holding the lead in very, very lightly. It'll pull off ever so easy. And then I've got a quick change swivel on the end. That's it, nothing else. And a lead, doesn't matter what lead you use. And then I'm just going to attach my rig, which we saw earlier. Put a bit of foam over it, just to protect the hook more than anything else. Um, and it also just allows it to sink down a bit slower. Because there is a bit of weed out there, but I know I'm set to go on to just the edge of the silt. So we'll just pop this on. little tail rubber on there a little rig sleeve just to help kick away a little bit not too much and it should just come down a little sinker in the middle big chord sinker at the bottom and it should just all come down nicely put it on one side clip it shut clip the other side shut pull the line a little bit tight so the leads up against the back of the boat and just dip the rig over the side put some bait in it got some carpa mix here got the rs and the sweet corn and the sweet corn pellets all with sweet corn syrup on putting four of these in Bit of hemp and maize. Put three of them in. Grab the maggots. Couple of them in. Let's make it three, shall we? We're going on tomorrow.
pop the rig in, just set it on top. Make sure everything's turned on. Absolutely. Grab the bolt. Dump it in. And then what I do is, I grab my rod, put it in that hand, bail arm off, and off she goes. And all I do is I just dip a little bit to keep the line tight. What I do is, when it starts to beep to say it's hit the GPS point, I just keep the boat running, then I dump the bait. And what I'll do is I keep my finger on the spool just to draw back the line a little bit so that the, the lead lands just on the edge rather than the middle. And it's simple, especially using 10 foot rods. I try and use 10 foot rods when I'm using the bait boat. Can just do it one handed and I'm just fingering the line off through my fingers. Because of the toe in the water and the wind, it's best just to try and keep it as low as possible. Finger off, you know when it wants a line, it just pulls. You'll probably hear it beeping round about now. That's it beeping, I'm gonna left it, right it, that's me dumped it, but the bait, the boat's still moving. And then I don't worry about the boat. I put that down. It's all about the line now. Because the line's already tight. Put my swinger on. And bring her back. Hi, my name's Gary Chapman and you join me today on the banks of Orchid Lake in Oxfordshire. I'm currently here with Rob Bird and Luke Shepherd from Catron TV and it's cold. It's blowing a hoolie, we've got 35 to 40 mile an hour winds and it's freezing. I'm currently in a swim called the New Middles and I'm fishing out at 24 wraps which is the maximum you can fish from this swim and I'm using a combi rig. Now this is Captura. It's a semi-stiff section in the middle, which has got a fluorocarbon inner. And I've cut a little bit away, which gives me a supple D. That's tied liner liner style with some shrink tube. And inside the shrink tube, I've just got a little piece of lead wire. On top of that, as a bait, I've got a custom made mainline cell and ISO sweep pop-up. And that's currently what I've got on all three rods. Now, this rig has done me several big fish over the last few years, including my last couple of 40s. I have ultimate faith in it, and I'm sure it will put a fish on the bank for us today at some point, if we're lucky enough to see one. We're 24 hours into the session now, and the weather conditions have changed, and I don't think they're feeding on the bottom at the moment. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna wind in, and I'm gonna put a zig on, and I'm gonna throw it out there and see if that happens. I have noticed that the fish are up in the water a little bit, so I think a change of plan is the order of the day. So the line I'm currently using is Synapse Wild Carp Camo, and I absolutely love it. It's a fantastic belt and braces line, which I absolutely trust. I've taken it all over the place. I've taken it from small pits, I've taken it to large pits, and it's never, ever let me down. This stuff will be everything you need it to be. I'm currently fishing at 24 wraps, and it's sailing through the rings. You can't even hear it going out. So if you're, like I said, if you're in a market for a belt and braces line, you can 100% rely on Synapse Wildcard Camo is the one for you. So bait, what I'm using today on this session is a mixture of essential cell and cell boilie, which I'm using in conjunction with cell pellet, which has got a coating of cell smart liquid and cell stick mix. So at this time of year, I don't think you really want to be filling it in. So I'm going in quite lightly with the bait. And all I'm doing is I'm using a couple of scoops of the cell pellet and then a few handfuls of the cell 
and essential cell boilies. Couple in there like that. That's more than enough in there to get a bite. To that, I'm adding the cell stick mix. A liberal dose of that. And some of the new cell smart liquid. Now, when you're using this, especially in winter at this time of year, it's really important that you give it a good shake. You'll hear it inside the bottle, it will start to mix. If you don't do that, it will separate in the bottle and you won't really be getting the best from it. So give it a good shake, take the top off. Give that a good dose. Mix all that up. Try to get everything you can covered. You want everything covered in it. And this will do two things. Not only will it add extra attraction to the baited area, which is what you want at this time of year, especially if the fish are off the bottom, you want to try and draw them down, but it will also add weight to the mix when you're spawning it out. So if you've got an undertow, quite a savage one like we have today, this will ensure that the bait will get to the bottom and you won't be spreading it all over your swim. Right, so the bait's all knocked up. We're going to cast out three or four spawns over the area. Let's get on with it. Right, so that's the bait out over the area. Uh, a good few spawns put out over the top of it. It is freezing here, it's Baltic. So I'm gonna jump in a bivy, put a brew on, and try and get some warmth. I'll catch up with you later. Right guys, good evening. It is now, what time we got, Andy? 10 to five. 10 to five, so starting to lose the light and I thought it'd be a good opportunity to update you on what's been going on. <laughs> what's been going on is winter fishing um, and it's been very very difficult, very very windy, we have to sit with the back to the lake to uh, hopefully not muffle the audio with the wind but the long and short of it is we're trying our level best. Um, it's interesting actually because all day where we've seen the fish show um, the birds have not moved pretty much from that spot. They're, they're kind of there or thereabouts, sort of circling. The, you know, the seagulls are always, always sort of circling and diving. And it's just feeding into this idea that I've got that there's a hatch going on um, and there may well be fish there. Whether they're feeding at the moment or not is debatable. I think if they were, we'd have had a bite on the zigs. Um, but I'm quietly confident, quietly confident that we've got the rigs in the right zone. So all we can really do now is resist the temptation to think that we're doing anything wrong uh, because I don't believe that we are and in a scenario like this you can end up pulling your hair out trying different things and the reality is the bite windows are very very small and you've just got to hope that you've got your tactics right when they feed which I think we have so for now um, as I always say <laughs> keep everything crossed um, and Fingers crossed. I actually think it's going to be tomorrow morning, um, which is when we see the most prominent activity from the carp. So nine o'clock ish, nine until about sort of midday um, is when I think we've got our best chance. But you never know. Um, and as I say, guys, all we can do is keep plugging away. I know something happens. So uh, you, the next time you hear from me, we'll either be with a fish, um, <laughs> please with a fish, or to recap uh, about what's been going on tomorrow morning. So I will catch up with you soon right guys I thought I'd better just check in with you about Krypton in 25 pound now this is actually the first time that I've used it um, I think it'd be hitting the stores probably around about the 10th of February something like that would be available to buy so it was a really good opportunity this session for me to get out and uh, buzz it out now First impressions, I've got to tell you, are really, really good. And that isn't a biased impression, that's the truth. What I've done is I've used it with the bait boat and I've cast it. So 
if you're ever going to get line twist, bait boats are great for that, you know. So that was one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure I was taking it out in the boat a few times just to see how it behaved. Obviously, we're in a really, really strong wind today, um, which is going to put bows in the line, all that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, if you're going to run into problems, there's a good chance a session like this is where you're going to do it. Now, off the back of that, because of the tactics and the fact that we've changed tactics, I actually stepped over to Ziggs, um, which meant that it gave me the opportunity to cast it. Now, what you've got to remember, it's just over 040 in diameter. And if you look across the market, um, you will see that there are a hell of a lot of main lines around the £15 mark or marketed as the £15 mark that are all very, you know, of a similar diameter around the 040. So whilst it breaks at £25, don't let that scare you um, into thinking it's an overly thick mono or anything like that. I've been punching it the best part of, uh, let me think, 80, 85 yards with new rods actually so new rods new line if anything's going to go wrong it will do and six foot you know up to five foot zigs and it's handled itself absolutely brilliantly i've had to punch it low to keep under the wind obviously because with a slightly thicker mono the wind may catch it uh, so you've got to sort of punch it that would be the same with anything um, but my first impressions this is very much sort of a first impression review is that it's lovely sinks I think a little bit quicker than the 21, which would make sense. But it, guys, you know, it's difficult to gauge because we've got a, we've had a constant chop on the water, but it definitely feels like that to me. Um, I'm feeling a drop as well. So again, with the conditions that we've got at that kind of range, you would expect to feel a drop, um, but I'm feeling a definite drop, which is really, really reassuring for me moving forward using this stuff. And I think with main lines, well, for me in particular, everybody is different, but for me in particular, I always will use the strongest, um, thickest main line that I can, can do um, because it will sink that little bit faster. You've got that extra insurance, you know, that if you run into any bother, it's good, you're going to be looked after by the main line on your reels. And so far, that's exactly what 25 Krypton, pound Krypton is doing. Brand new on the spools no uh, it's not lively or bouncy like you might associate with a thicker mono so it's just you know so far so good um i'm sure we'll get plenty of uh, reviews coming in from customers soon enough but for me first impressions spot on Right guys, whilst we're on the subject of the new Krypton Carp, um, it probably goes without saying, but it's definitely worth mentioning that it will of course work with the WB460 Katran head torch. So, you know, with a flick of a button, um, your lines are really, really well illuminated, which I can tell you is, and you can ask anybody else that's used it, it's, it's absolutely invaluable um, for, God, there's so many things, you know, so fishing at range, um, making sure, checking your lines, making sure they're all on the spot, guiding fish in the right direction at range, avoiding snags, avoiding your other lines. Um, I mean, we've recently found out actually that with a bait boat, bringing it back in, you know, on the, as you're bringing your boat back in, um, it's really, really handy just to pop that head torch on and to be able to see so you're avoiding your lines with your boat, wrapping up, you know, it really is the gift that keeps on giving. But uh, it's actually worth pointing out too when I'm on the subject of the head torch that. It's not a UV light. We get asked quite a bit about where can we buy the UV head torch and we would not put out an ultraviolet head torch because it's dangerous. You know, simply put, it's a dangerous product. Um, it's not good for your eyes, not good for your skin. You know, it's just not a, it's not a good product, especially for kids. So if you're looking for a cheap alternative, by all means do so, but don't buy a UV one because uh, they're not great for you. But yeah, as I say, £25 Krypton, like all the rest of them, work absolutely fantastically under the Katran light. Right, good morning and welcome to the reality of winter carp fishing. Um, we've plugged away and we've plugged away. I don't think we've done anything wrong, uh, but this is fishing in the winter, you know. So as far as I'm aware, nothing has been out on the lake since we've been here. Um, and you know that's what it's like this time of year sometimes it's good sometimes it's challenging um, but if you're not getting out and doing it um, you're not going to catch them are you so we hope you've enjoyed the feature um, we've covered it as best as we can and fingers crossed <laughs> next time you see us it'll be slightly warmer with slightly more favorable conditions 
and with a cart, you never know. So, uh, but yeah, thanks ever so much for watching, and I will catch up with you soon.